Okay, so now part A was the kinetic energy, part B was the potential energy, part C was the total energy. Now let's do part D, and I have a question for you. If you could ignore air resistance and drag and everything like that, like we do in physics class, where you ignore friction to learn the fundamental physics, what would the speed be if we landed with all this energy? So we're simply going to say that the total energy that we have initially, E total 1, let's call it, it's got to be equal to the total energy 2 as we're landing. Energy is conserved, can never be created nor destroyed, just changes forms. So in the practice area, when we had our engine failure at 1,000 feet, we had a lot of kinetic energy plus potential energy. But as we land, we are now going to be at the ground. So usually I would ask a question to the class and hopefully someone would say, aha, our potential energy goes to zero because we're on the ground. So we only have kinetic energy too. The potential energy goes to zero. It's gone. Okay, so let's plug in. So we have our one half mv1 squared. We have our mgh equals our kinetic energy, one half mv squared two on the ground. Now you could cancel all the masses, typically you do that in physics, but since we have the numbers here, I wanna leave the masses in there. We already have from our answer for part C that this is the total energy, which we had as um, 11.9 megajoules, 11.9 times 10 to the sixth joules. The mass of the airplane is still the same, one half times 2550 pounds, which we said was 1159.1 kilograms times V2 squared. And then I ask the class, you look at this a moment, and they all say, aha, we only have one unknown here, so we can move these constants to the left side, take a square root, Everyone should pause your video and try that now on your own. And we end up getting V2 equals 278.8 knots. Wow. What does this tell us? This is clearly way out of the realm of possibility. This is way over our VNE. You all know that VNE means the V never exceeds speed. You'd have structural failure on your Cessna. But what are we assuming? If we land with all of this energy without friction and drag. So this is just an academic exercise so we can see, wow, there's a lot of energy being lost to drag in reality. Okay, so that's what I want to do for part E. Part E, um, if we slow it down to something reasonable. Okay, we all know that we are going to do our ABC checklist when we have an engine failure. Airspeed, best field, and C for checklist. Airspeed, we're going to pitch for best glide. This is different in each aircraft. It's where your parasitic drag curve and your induced drag curve meet. For the Cessna Skyhawk, it's 68 knots indicated airspeed. You can look in your checklist, your engine failure during flight checklist. You should have this memorized, so you just know to pitch for 68. Okay, so 68 knots. And we do a good job spiraling down or reaching an airport or reaching a field where we can just land smoothly and no one gets hurt. And let's say we do this up to about 200 feet off the ground. Okay, so your homework now, pause the video again, calculate this speed in meters per second, just like in part A. Calculate this height in meters, just like in part A. So go ahead and follow the work from the video in part A and do that. And I will show you the answers I got without showing you all the conversions. I end up getting this speed is 33.4 meters per second for this one, and end up getting a height of 60.96 meters. And the question is, A, what is the, or part one, what is the energy now? And two, how much energy was lost to friction and drag? So this is really cool and interesting physics. So we're gonna say our energy that this thing has now is kinetic plus potential. So we have some one half mv squared, and we have some MGH. We've really slowed it down really nicely at our best glide speed. We're 200 feet above the ground, and I picked this because that's a riddle call out. 200 feet, stable, continuing on every time the riddle airplanes land. So we're gonna try to keep that 68 to 200. Then you might wanna slow it down more. You can slip it in. You can add more flaps. 
you can do certain techniques to slow down as much as possible before you land. Okay, so we plug in here and we get one half. Our mass is still 2550. Now that is gonna be a little different because we're burning fuel and you're gonna be a little bit lighter than 2550. But as an academic exercise here, we'll just leave it at the 2550, which we had is 1159.1 kilograms. 2550 was pounds, remember, this is kilograms. We've now slowed it down to 68 knots, 33.4 meter per second. Quantity squared, don't forget that in your kinetic energy formula. Our mass is 1159.1 kilograms. Our G, we're still on Earth, so 9.8 meter per second squared. And our height is now 200 feet above the ground, only about 61 meters. If you want all those decimals, you can, but I would rather just get the big picture here. So pause the video again and crunch all these numbers and make sure you get the same answer that, that we do. And remember, again, this is total energy. And remember, before it was how much? It was 11.9 megajoules when we were at 1,000 feet and 100, or 3,000 feet and 100 knots. So you crunch all these numbers and you get 1.4 megajoules. Wow. A lot less by a factor of almost 10. Where is all that energy going? You're doing a great job putting in the flaps. You're having a lot of drag. You're bleeding off all that airspeed. You're getting rid of all that energy. You're being really patient. A lot of people make a mistake of panicking. They get all antsy and they panic and they don't scan their airspeed indicator and they don't have their pitch properly properly uh, trimmed. So one thing is to stay calm, stay calm on the radio, pitch for 68 knots and scan it every five seconds or every 10 seconds and make sure you're staying at 68 knots. That'll give you more time as you glide. These Cessnas are gliding machines. The research shows that people who stay calm on the radio, they have good radio calls, mayday, mayday, mayday. They give a position report. They're also gonna do a better job of staying at 68 knots and reaching the field and having a nice smooth landing. So what was my question then? How much energy was lost to drag? So that's just the difference in these two. The energy that was dissipated in drag would be the 11.9 megajoules of total energy minus 1.4 megajoules that we now have when we did a good job of getting to 68 knots, 200 feet above the ground. And this gives us what? 10.5 megajoules lost to frictional drag. And some of my colleagues like to do it the other way because it's final minus initial, gives you a negative number because it's lost. So, if you like that better, that's fine. That's actually probably more proper. But I like to think of energy as always being positive, but it's fine if you want to put 1.4 megajoules minus 11.9 megajoules. And that's how a lot of textbooks have it, so you don't get confused and they say a negative number means energy lost. Equally fine. So we're losing a tremendous amount of energy, 10.5 out of 11.9 if you do a good job as a pilot dissipating all this energy.